I'm going to show you the best Class A ship in Starfield, and with this ship design, we'll be able to abuse an exploit to win any ship battle with just basic Class A ship parts. So first, let's build the ship together, and then we'll talk about how to use it in order to exploit the game and win any ship fight for free. The parts we need for this ship can be found literally anywhere, but there are special structural ones in different places. So for the exact one I'm going to build, we're going to go to Cheyenne. But once you see this, you'll know what you need, and you'll realize you can do it anywhere you want with whatever ship design you want so we're gonna go to Aquila and go to Aquila City once you get here on your way to the town you'll see the shipyard place right here to the right go inside there'll be another copy paste ship services technician you're gonna talk to him and you're gonna view and modify your ships now if you don't have a ship to use you can buy a ship or pirate a ship and then use that ship because we're gonna completely build a ship from the ground up in order to build one of these so once you have a ship you're ready to replace go ahead and go to the ship builder on it and then just delete literally everything we're gonna build this thing from scratch now click add at the bottom and you're gonna want to go to the cockpits for this ship design we're gonna use the viking cp 100 cockpit for a lot of reasons but one of the biggest ones being it only has a mass of four we want to keep our mass down as much as we can now you're gonna go to the habs tab and you're going to do a two by one i'm gonna go ahead and put a workshop just because i think it's the most useful one and you're gonna tack it on the back like that then after that you're gonna go to the base tab and you're gonna put in either hope four or ng6 landing bay and put it like that now we're, we can swap this out later the one i have on mine you have to get a different one these ones can't be flipped but in other places we can get one like this that'll flip and face the opposite way which would look a lot better so now we're gonna go to the structural tab you're gonna find the, the stroud cap a port for top or whatever something like this you're gonna take this this one is a bunch of different versions so we're gonna take it we're gonna copy it we're gonna flip it stick one on the other side oh that's not quite right um there we go like that and then there's also an inverted version, so we're going to try to get the underside correct like this, and then also get one over here, something like that. And that's going to be the first front of it. Now we're actually going to go back to Habs. I did forget one thing here. We're going to need another one by one, and we can go ahead and move this uh, the docker back or whatever that, not docker, the bay back, because we're going to need a little bit more space for another structural component. Now you're going to try to find the Stroud Cowling 3 LAPT. It's going to go on like that. You can take one, you're also going to flip the other. Then you're going to take these things and you're going to um, flip them and you're going to do different variant, get the backside ones, and you're going to try to put them on just like on the front side, how we had them. So we can get one like this and then we get one like that. And then we repeat the same thing as the other side for the bottom. So now you should have something like this. And so now we're going to fill out the bottom a little bit. We're going to go to the gear tab. We're going to take the Acculander 11 landing gear and we're going to take it. And we're going to put it in here. You can also grab it and then flip it until it has one that's symmetrical looking. There's attachments on both sides. Now we don't need the attachments on both sides, but it just looks a lot nicer. So you're going to put them like this, nice and symmetrical landing gear like that. So now you're going to go back to structural. You're going to want the Stroud mid bracer, and you're going to put one down right there. And then you're going to take one and duplicate it, move it to the other side, and then stick it in on the other side like that. Now you should have something like this. Now this leaves a little bit of space now for the shield. And since we're still just building an A-class ship, we're gonna use one of these deflectors and you'll just use the best one you can use. Now, if you want a super one, you can use the exploit. I should probably have mentioned this already. It's an exploit. I posted another video. You can take one that doesn't use starship design. Okay, not like that. So we're gonna have to get it here where we're gonna put not our mouse on this, have it the center of our screen, go to put it, and there'll be no room for it. And then we'll make it so it was red when we placed it and then we move it away from it like this. And then we can use the S and W keys to put on better make better ones that we can't even use even if we don't have the starship even if we don't have the starship design skill we can still just pull one out like this so if you want to put the best one on you can do something like that but you don't really need shield for this build because you're going to be invincible using an, an exploit that i'll show you so i'm just going to stick on an sg30 shield we'll put it off to the side and then we'll rotate around and then we'll stick it on here on the bottom i like to put it like that just to hide it from view and now all down here we're going to duplicate one of those uh whatever they were the structural things we were putting on there these stroud mid bracers and we're just going to put it on right there in the front and that's good enough if you have some other way you would like to design this you can design it any way you want i'm actually going to change this one up from the last one a little bit i'm gonna put a nova weapon mount on the front like that and see what that looks like you know we, we could roll with that you can mix it up any way you want or just have the blunt end right there at the bottom there's no good pieces here or you go to another space vendor and try to find some part that fits the front better that you like better now you're gonna go back to the structural tab you're gonna find the stroud engine bracer a you're gonna put one of these up here you're gonna duplicate it and you're also gonna try to put one right below it like that and then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side as well now you should have something like this you're gonna take another one of those pieces from there the um, stroud mid bracers and you're going to take one of these and you're going to put it on the top. You need to move up, use buttons on the right, R and F or whatever it is on Xbox. You're going to take one of these on each side like that. And that's going to be the basis for the two side wings. Then back in structural, you're going to look for the Teo Cowling 4 top. You're going to put one on like that. And then you're going to take it and duplicate it. Probably the better angle than that. And then flip it and put it under it like that. 
then you're gonna do the same thing to the other side as well to make it symmetrical. Now it's time for the reactor, and I would, if you're willing to use the glitch, I would highly recommend using it to get the 380T Stellarator, or something like that, because you do want a lot of power in order to get the most out of this thing, or get the 164. And some of these will unlock as you level up your character, by the way, so if you don't see something, it means that you need to level up your actual character level. Uh, so if you do want to do this, like I said before, you just zoom in a little here and make sure that you're right over top of it to where uh, when you have your mouse off of it and you open it up, if it's too high, you got to go lower. Uh, it'll show it red. When it's red, you click it, and then it'll do this. Then you can drag it over here and go down to the last one. And then, bam, you place the 164 millimeter whatever uh, reactor. And that's how you can do it even if you don't have Starship Design Level 4. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to show you that it's not totally necessary. Um, so I'm going to put on a... Uh, uh, 134 millimeter that only has 20 and you can also get a uh, skill in your science tree or tech tree whatever it is that makes you have more reactors but more reactor space so we're not actually putting that there i don't know why i did that we're gonna put it over here on the left and then on the right we're gonna put over or on the right we're gonna put the grav bay or grav drive now for the grav drive you're again you're just gonna want the best thing that you can get for your level in here and make it still be a class so we can take in my case uh i'm higher level and i can put on one of these ones that gives 20 I think that's the best one yeah there's a 20 and it's the r2000 so we take that put it there for sym symmetry so that's where we kind of hide them so you don't really people like it looks better to have them there and you don't really have to have them just sticking off somewhere and then after that then you're going to fuel tanks you're going to go to the m40 ulysses he3 tank and we do this because it looks really nice and also we do want some fuel tanks so we don't have to like grab jump like every single solar system to get somewhere so we put one on each side and that will add some symmetry. And there's options to put more on in a sec instead of cargo. You can swap it out with cargo, or you can you, know, you can mix up the ship any way you want. So uh, we're going to put that on there, though. Then after that, we're going to go to the cargo, and we're going to look for the Caravel V102 cargo hold because they look nice on this. And we're just going to stick them on like that on the sides here. This is a perfect spot for them. And then we're going to stick them onto this other side same way. And there now we have 1,400 cargo space. So now we're going to go to the dockers. We're going to take the Connect Pro docker top. And we're going to put that on there. And then on the back, it's finally time to put on some engines. So for the engine, this is really the big thing here that is going to be extremely useful. Um, it's not the only way to do this exploit, but it makes the exploit way easier. And that's going to be to use the White Dwarf 3015 engine. It's going to use Starship Design Level 4. So you could, again, just use that exploit that I showed you if you really want it ahead of time. So we can put on this and then go down to it, and then try to count how many it was, or we see the bottom top speed, and then you can put it on like that if you don't have Starship Design, or if you have Starship Design, you just you just do it, right? You just put it on. Um, and we're going to put on three like that. Now, you don't need this, but you would ideally at least have one of the ones that does 150, which is pretty much all the A-Class ones. So if you can't do that one, then you just put on you know some other engines, however you want, whatever makes sense, whatever you find that you like, or willing to do, change it up some other way. But if you can... This is what we want. It's the most exploity of all the exploits for making your ship invincible using the trick I'm going to show you. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and roll with this. Then we're going to go back to structural. We're going to take the Hope Tech Pipes A mid, and we're going to stuff these under here just to make it look a little bit less weird. To just The asymmetry without them looks kind of strange. So now you should have something like this, which looks really good now. It's looking really, really good. So now you're going to go back to structural, and you're going to take one equipment plate, and you're going to put it on back here. Okay, so we'll have one back there. And I'm just doing that for symmetry reasons. We actually wouldn't have to put that, but it'll make it look a lot better for what we're going to do. So now we got to do the weapons. So the main thing we want here is we want the longest range weapons we can get that are not missiles. Missiles are a lie. They're not long range because uh, they have to be like within 2000 range to lock on. So they don't actually do the range they say, unless there's something I don't know about that would make them do it. But either way, it's all the same thing. Uh, so instead, what we're going to get is we're going to get these electron beams and proton beams. Uh, so we have these options here with A-Class. If you don't have Starship Design, then you're going to use, you know, the ones that don't use it. So you're going to use the, um, let's see, the PB-30 and the uh, 20 MEV. And if you have Starship Design, then you're going to put the better ones on. Now, I'll put, I'll put the worst ones on. It's not a big deal. Uh, so the main thing is this one uses max power of 4. So for the uh, uh, 20 MEV, that's why I put the equipment plate. It's just for the symmetry to make it look better. We can put those three across the back. And then for the PB-30 electron beam... We can put it right here and right here, and then we can also put it there and there. Or we can even, because we put this on this other, this new earth design I have here, I'm actually going to put them down here and see what that looks like. I kind of like that. Um, so now we have something like that. 
And uh, again, if you want to, if you have Starship Design, if you want to use that glitch I showed for the engines or for anything, uh, you can do the same thing here, and you can put on the PB-50 Proton Beam. And uh, actually, I don't know that you'd want that necessarily, because it uses 4 max power, but uh, you put on whatever weapons you want, is the main point I'm making. Okay, so now you're going to go to Flight Check, you're going to go to Weapons, you're going to click on W0, assign it to one of the weapons, and then W1, you're going to assign it to the other weapon. And then after that, the ship is ready to go. And that is the entire ship. Now, for color, double-click the, uh, the cockpit. It'll select the whole ship. And then you can click on color uh, or press the button for it because clicking it somehow deselects. And then you're going to go in here, and this is how we did the color. So for mine, I think I put it around here somewhere. And then I put the saturation up and the brightness down. So we can do that, and then we can actually just accept. And then we can double-click it, go back to it, and now it'll have it in the recent. And then we can just do the recent in order to pop it on all of them. And it would be something like that. And then we hit accept. And then you have this ship. And it's going to look something like this. Looks pretty good. And it's all one level, so you don't have that crazy ladder nonsense you have to deal with, other than where you come in and also for the docker. And that is the ship. If I had to give it a nickname, I'd probably call it Blue Lightning, because it's going to be fast as lightning, guys. This thing is 180 speed with 84 mobility. This thing is fast. Fast as you can possibly go while still having a decent amount of cargo space. All right, so that's the ship. That's how you build the Blue Lightning ship. When you're done, don't forget to hit exit and accept. Uh, you can do different and not spend 85,000, but build it any way that you want. But the main thing is you just need those engines and you need those max range weapons. That is the main thing you need. Other than that, do it any way that you want to do it. Just make sure that you're actually as fast as you can go or at least close to at least 150 speed and have those weapons that have 3,800 range on them. So now that we got the ship built, it's time for me to show you how we can exploit the game and be literally invincible with something as simple as this. So we're going to go to the settings, we're going to go to gameplay, we're going to turn it on, make sure it's on very hard. I want to show you, this is as hard as the game can possibly be. I'm also like level 170 or something, so the ships, enemy ships are the highest level they can be. We're going to open up the map, and we're going to go over to the Crix system, which is where the heart of the Crimson Fleet is. And we're going to go to the key which is where we'll have to fight a ton of pirates all at once that are all super high level. So whenever you get attacked by pirates, you're just going to look for an opening and you're going to boost away, make sure your engine is fully powered up. And then you can just get away like this. You should be able to go as high as 860 speed with all the perks, but even without the perks, you'll still be able to go really fast. And then what you're going to do is you're going to target one of them and see how far you are. At 6,000 meters, they disappear. So you're just going to want to casually fly off until they disappear. Uh, you can power down shields and engines and things. I'm going to leave a little bit of shield on. I'm going to power down my engine. And then I'm going to put it all into the guns. And this is why you would definitely want a better reactor. Because then this, it's much better if you just have the guns powered up. It's very risky doing it like this. So you're going to turn around start backing up. And then you're going to spam at them. Like this. And then once they start to get too close, you're going to... Um, you're going to turn around and start flying away so you don't want them to get closer than say 2,000 meters so now I'm just gonna boost away I'm going to power down my weapons put it back into engine so I can get away and that was kind of a bad sample because they were coming in from like weird angles so they were like it was as if they were moving faster than they should be moving but you should be able to just fly away from them with this engine and then eventually you'll lose them until that you know you'll go till all the red things disappear and then you turn around and slowly get the one that's closest to you so they just disappeared. I'm going to turn around now until one of them reappears so I know which one's closest to me. I don't get multiple on me at once. Okay, there they are. I'm going to be really greedy here. I'm going to power down my engine entirely. And then I'm going to just sit here and fire on them when they come into range. And so this is what, again, you want to just get a better reactor. If you need the starship skill or whatever. Because otherwise it's so much micromanagement that it's just straight up dangerous. But if you have your guns fully powered up, you should be able to do a ton of damage before they get too close. And now they're already getting too close, so I have to turn around. So this is why you want to upgrade your reactor, but you could do it like this. This is a situation where you really don't want the weakest Class A part, ships, the parts or whatever. You're definitely going to want slightly better parts than that. But you can also just turn around like this and do it in cycles like this. And then not have as good of guns, but then be able to do damage faster than their shields can actually uh, regenerate. But you got to be careful because you can end up with taking damage if you're not careful. Because it's really hard if you don't have them all disappear. It's hard to know which one's closest because the targeting system is really bad in this game. But I'm going to go upgrade the reactor to the higher reactor so I can show you what it looks like if you just go ahead and get a better reactor. So back in the ship design, we're going to take that reactor 
and then we're going to go to the reactors and you could use the glitch to get a better one or if you have the piloting starship design you can just put a totally insane one on here and depending on your level you'll have different ones available at a higher level like i think level 60 or something you can even get this one and then it has 40 you can put that one on uh but i'm going to try to find one that will actually fit in that gap a little bit better Okay, this one will work pretty good. The 104 DS Mag Inertial Reactor has 39 power generated. I can I can put it right in there. Also, my engine got deleted. There we go, put that one on. And now we're ready to go. Now let me show you what this thing can do if you can just have the guns powered up at all times and not have to micromanagement, micromanage it. So just like before, we're gonna boost off. This time I might take a ton of damage though because one of them spawned like right in front of me. But you're just gonna boost away. You're gonna get that distance and like i said you're gonna wait for all these red dots on the radar to disappear and once the last one disappears that's when you're gonna turn around so i'm about to lose them all now i'm gonna make sure that my weapons are powered up because i have a better reactor now i can put points into it like all the points into the weapon all right now the last one disappeared so now i turn around and let them come back in so that way i just just so i know which one's closest i'm gonna move forward a little bit just to save me some time and then i'm gonna start backing up in order to um get a little bit more wiggle room of movement. Now with these guns fully powered up, I can annihilate him. Also, we got one over there that's somehow firing at me. He must have a longer range weapon. But either way, if he boosts off to the side, that's fine. Just go ahead and fly away and now just repeat this process. So I didn't upgrade the gun, so we still have the really weak guns, and I was able to kill every single one of them. We're down to the last one now, and once it gets down to a 1v1, it gets even easier, because then you don't have to run away as much. You can just run away until you see them far enough away and turn around and keep going. So even if they boost off to the side in this scenario, it's like not even a big deal. But I could just turn like this in a 1v1 and then just fly away. I can see how far he is. I'm so fast, I can quickly get him back up to, I can see right now, 4,000 meters. And then I just turn around and get him back in range before his shields come back up. And then repeat the process. So in a 1v1 or like a 2v1 or something like that, uh, it's 10,000 times easier than when there's like eight of them to try to deal with. But even with these crappy guns, as long as I have the better reactor, and you could do it without the better reactor. It's just a lot harder to do without the better react without a better reactor. Um, but even with that reactor. But if you're going to go ahead and cheese and get, you know, the or just have the skills and get the, you know, Starship 4 engine and a better reactor, might as well put the better guns on too. So let's take one more look at this with actual good guns, the better version of these guns. So this time we're going to do something different. So we're not talking about the better ones on. We're going to put on the auto one. So these actually are not auto like firing. These ones, what it means is that they have a charge and they unload faster, but then they can only fire for so long which lets them do more DPS. Or at least I think that's how that works. So we're not gonna worry about symmetry this time. We're just gonna go ahead and stick these things on wherever, because we only need three of each of these. And I'll just put those on for now. You can tidy it up any way that you wanna tidy it up. But now we have these things on, these insane auto weapons that use Starship rank four, uh, Starship design rank four and rank three, which again, you could glitch to put them on even without Starship design if you have the credits, using that trick that I showed earlier in the video like four different times whatever way you want to do. Now, once you change them, make sure you go back to your weapons and reassign the new weapons like that and then pay for it and you're ready to go. Let's check out this last design now with actually good weapons. So here we are one last time. I'm going to boost off just like last time and let's see what this is like with actually good weapons. So the last of the red dots just disappeared. I'm going to turn around back on them just like before, but this time things might end up being a little bit different. So we're going to fly back into range get to about 4,500 or so, and then start slowing down and backing up. And once they get about 3,200, we're going to unload into them. And with these higher level weapons, and remember, this is on very hard, by the way. This is not easy. This is on very hard. Oh, I'm in range of one. I better turn and run. And I was able to just blow them up that fast. Now, there's one thing you do need to watch for, which is sometimes, because they all spawn with random weapons, random items, random stuff, if they also have a long range gun, then you've got to be careful not to absorb too much damage or be careful not to have one of them firing on you while the other one is uh, the one you're attacking. So you want to make sure if that one of them has a long range gun, you're ideally going to want to deal with that one first, if possible. Uh, and also that's why you want to try to do what I'm doing here in order to make sure you can fight them one at a time. So let's see one now at level 38 this time and let's see what happens to the level 38. And we annihilated them. So you can see how it's insanely easy. If you have 
a good enough reactor, then you can easily get it charged back real fast. And then just unload another one and kill another. And it can get, you know, super fast then to do this. And so I think we just took out the one that had the longer range gun. Now we get our recharge. And now we can kill the next one. And you can see how if you actually get all the upgrades, this is an A-class ship, by the way. Just want to remind you guys, this is an A-class ship that I'm using right here. And we're able to do this much damage and take these guys out this easily. Now, another thing is, if you don't like the one that recharges like that, you can also try just going for the standard proton, proton cannon and stuff like that. It's up to you. But once you get the actual good weapons, you have um, the, a really good A-class reactor, and then you have those uh, 3,015 white dwarf engines. Once you have all that, then you can go anywhere and just kill any group of pirates without actually having to, like, do anything. I mean, it's not that you, could, not that you don't do anything, but you just win. It's just that simple. You just win. And it's not like the other ship exploit. So I have one that's easier than this that I made a video about. But it's really ugly. So, you know, like, it's not the best in that sense. It's just super ugly. So if you want a ship that's actually a normal ship, where you fight in a somewhat normal way, more importantly, just having a normal looking ship that looks really cool, and still be able to win any fight with some type of exploit, well, if you're having any trouble with ship fights at all, then just make a cool ship, A-class, that's super fast, that has this type of setup, and then you can easily just win these battles, even on the hardest difficulty, and it's not even a problem, unless you're really sloppy and lazy like I was right there. But even then, as long as you react fast enough, you just run away, reset, and then repeat the process. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully now you have a better idea of how to be invincible. This is a really cool way to have a normal ship and be completely invincible. And also how to make this really cool ship. I kind of call it the Blue Lightning. It's just an arbitrary name. It's just a really cool ship. So that's how to do that, guys. That's how to be invincible with an A-class ship and have the fastest A-class ship, the perfect A-class ship in Starfield.